Bonjour everyone! The holidays are almost here and it also means this year is almost over and I am always so happy to start a new year. There is something about a fresh new beginning but the reality is also that January and February are actually the coldest months here in France where I live and I'm always looking for ways to make the winter season feel cozy. And while I was thinking about all of that for myself, I figured it might be nice to share a couple of ideas with you to make your winter a little cozier this winter, but also to Frenchify your winter. And I got the idea because I recently made a wonderful discovery. So today in this video, I'm sharing three ways to make your winter cozier, but mostly to bring France to your home this winter. Here we go. Now the first thing obviously has everything to do with food. What I've learned about the French is that food is a very important part of life, but not just enjoying the food, it's also the pleasure of preparing the food. Taking your time to source the ingredients, to get them from the best places, taking your time to cook and not see it as a chore, but enjoy the process. I really see it as a moment I'm taking for myself and my family, and my boys like helping me prepare the food. Also, in France, people really value enjoying the food together, so eating at a table. And Sunday is the day of the week where you spend time with your family at the lunch table. Lunch is the most important meal of the day in France. So typically, French families will meet with their family on Sunday to enjoy a family meal. So wouldn't it be nice if you would bring a little bit of that French vibe to your Sundays this winter and maybe pick one or two Sundays each month where either you stay with the people in your household or you invite other family members or friends and you do a French Sunday lunch. And afterwards go for a nice little walk maybe in the woods or in your neighborhood. Sunday really is the family quality time in France. So you saw me cook this, well, it's a bread really, with pesto and mozzarella that I prepared for this Sunday. I shot this last Sunday because afterwards we were going to a wonderful chateau here in the region for a little Christmassy vibe concert. So I prepared this bread so that when we would come home late in the afternoon, early evening, we would have that ready and we could eat it with some soup. So my first idea to bring France to your home is to turn at least one or two Sundays into this French family and friends quality time Sundays. My friend works at this chateau and honestly I didn't know it and she gave us a little tour. She showed us around some of the salons, some of the rooms where they host parties and weddings and she took me to a very special room.
When the Japanese owner bought this 16th century chateau, he wanted it to have a chapel like you find so often in these chateaus. But a chapel would mean, by definition, that it would have to be Christian. But he wanted to create something that would represent all religions and all belief systems of the world. And he invited a Dutch artist to create this Dome du Cosmos, is what he called it, which represents all that the universe holds. There is a table that represents the elements water, air, earth, and fire. And then there is all kinds of images and colors. I thought it was just magical. The second way that you can bring France to your home this winter is by reading French books. Now, if you don't read French, no problem, because a lot of the books will be translated into English. But you can read wonderful books about life in the French countryside that will bring France to your home. You will feel like you're in France. With everything that's going on in the world, quite honestly, I have felt such a desire to surround myself with softness. So the French have this beautiful word, douceur. So bring a little douceur to your house uh, and to your home. And one way that I have done this is that I started looking for a little book that I found when I studied French uh, back in my 20s, early 20s. I had a French friend and he and his wife had just had a baby and I was looking for a present. And we had this really beautiful little French children's bookstore and I found this book. So the book is about a little rabbit, Lola, and she wakes up one morning and she feels that her whole being is filled with all these little kind words that she would love to express to somebody. So she goes downstairs and she wants to say it to dad, but dad's running off to work. And then she wants to say it to mom, but mom's busy getting her ready for school. And then she comes in school and she wants to say these words to her teacher, but the teacher's busy with another little rabbit. So the little drawings and just the whole vibe of this book, it is so touching. So I started looking everywhere uh, online to find this book. It is by Karl Norak and Claude Dubois. I know it's been translated, so you should be able to find this in your language. And I think these old children's books just have a very different vibe to them. The other books that I wanted to share with you are by a writer that I have only discovered this year, Françoise Bourdin. What I like about her books is that they're very easy to read and they are all about people that go through a major life event, either a divorce or losing a parent, and they turn their life around. And the theme in most of them is that there is a house involved. So they either buy in a house in the countryside or they inherit a house. Um, so it is all about, in my opinion, having this hectic life and then escaping to a French farmhouse in the countryside and turning that into your new home. And the way she describes the landscapes of all these different regions of France where the books take place, so it is really a wonderful read on a cozy winter night. It will make you feel like you're in France. It will make you feel hopeful about where you can go in life. And the last writer that I wanted to talk about when we talk about reading books to Frenchify your winter season is a writer you probably know, Peter Mayle. He wrote the famous book, A Year in Provence. He bought a house, I think it was in the 90s, in the Luberon in Provence. And he writes about renovating the home. And it's just interesting how he talks about the French artisans and the, you know, everything about French life that he discovers when he lives there. 
and it is such a pleasure to read that book. And he's written many other books, and they're all so funny. I particularly like this Un Bon Cru. Uh, I won't uh, talk too much about what it's about, but it has a couple of very surprising twists and turns in it. And he just has this wonderful style. Peter Mail, basically any book you can get your hands on. He also has a really wonderful book about French eating culture, uh, gastronomy, and, and that's really nice as well, how he discovers all of that. And he just has a very nice way of, of describing everything. So the second way to bring France into your home this winter is by reading books about France or just nice novels that take place in France. And the third thing to bring France into your home is something I am so excited about. I don't know why I haven't heard about this earlier, <laughs> but I have discovered a streaming service called France Channel. And the title tells you everything you need to know about what this is about. Every single thing on there I want to watch. So you will find really lovely French movies wonderful French series that are taken from the French television. So there are series to learn about French culture, there are documentaries to learn about French cities like The Mysteries of Paris, or documentaries about Marie Curie and her life. And the series that I really like is called Culinary Road Trip. The original title is Les Carnets de Julie, and she's a chef, it's Julie, she's a chef, and she travels around France to visit the different regions of France. She meets with chefs and local, um, for example, cheese mongers, and it is so wonderful. It's, it literally is a culinary road trip. It's like everything you would want in, in one uh, show. So uh, I really like it because all of their content that they're streaming or that they're offering on this platform is originally French. I can't really tell you how that is different, but I immediately see and feel that this is a French production. There's a certain uh, slower pace to it. There is no exaggeration about how amazing this is. It is very authentic. So you learn about the French culture also just by seeing how they present their culture or how they, how they make a series like this. So that is really one of my favorites. And then they also have really nice series to discover France. So they take you to cities, regions, trails, hiking trails. I've particularly liked uh, the one on the volcanoes in the Auvergne. So it's original French shows and you can either choose English subtitles and sometimes you can also have an English voiceover. It depends on the show. You can also put French subtitles. If you want to learn French, you can watch it in French and have your French subtitles. I have made a little selection, my top five of series, movies and documentaries that I would love for you to discover. Top on my list is this movie, Back to Burgundy. It's a gorgeous, really touching movie about a family of winemakers. It was shot really just 10 minutes from my home. It is the gorgeous scenery of this region, but also a really beautiful family dynamic story. You have to watch this movie, really. I loved it so, so much. <laughs> Ben, moi, je, je fais du vin. Mmh. Il coûte bien, là, déjà, non D'abord, t'es fait un peu, d'accord Les feuilles, là, pour voir plus clair. Ça fait deux ans que je suis à plein temps avec papa, mais... Euh, ça fait quatre mois qu'il est à l'hôpital. Second is a two-part series on the wine region of Burgundy. There are many differences between different wine regions in France. What I've learned from living here is that the Burgundy wine region is so different from, for example, a Bordeaux wine region. There's a Burgundy classification. It is founded on the terroir, not on the domain's name. Burgundy is made up of plains, gentle slopes and hills like the one that you can see behind me. And in this two-part documentary, a couple of winemakers explain all the specifics of this region. It is so informative. It felt like taking a wine course 
So I highly recommend if you love wine and you're into wine and you want to learn more about it, watch that. Third is a series called The Mysteries of Paris, where they take you to untold stories and well, I'll just, I won't say too much. Just discover this for yourself. You'll learn about parts of Paris you didn't know existed and of their intriguing history, I would say. Fourth is the documentary um, Marie Curie, which I found really very fascinating. I didn't know anything about her, so it was really interesting to learn about this. And number five is the series of The Most Beautiful Trails a series of gorgeous hiking trails throughout France and it might give you really nice ideas for future trips to France. You can discover other parts of France that you didn't know of and even if you will never have the opportunity to travel to France, I believe this series along with all the other documentaries and beautiful series offers you a wonderful way to virtually travel to France. So as you can tell, I'm talking and talking and talking. I am genuinely enthusiastic about France Channel. There is only one little but. It is currently only available in the US. Would you believe I bought a VPN service so that I could watch it from France? I've included a link in the description where you can sign up and try it out for yourself. And at the moment, they have a special Happy Holidays offer, which is 30% off your yearly subscription to a France Channel. Now, this video is not sponsored by France Channel, but they did offer me a small commission that I will receive when you sign up through my link. So those are my three ways to bring France to your home this winter. I am wishing you very cozy holidays and a very warm and cozy winter this winter season. Thank you so much for being here on the channel, for following our journey, for all of your support in the last year. I honestly cannot wait to see what the new year will bring. We have so many more projects to work on and I am very grateful that you're here to support us with that, cheering us on and that you're following our journey. So thank you again, wishing you all the best and I will see you in the next year.